Safe Places is sexual assault, dating, and domestic violence and stalking uh, support service on campus. So it's actually for students, faculty, and staff, and mm -hmm. it's a confidential resource. So meaning that uh, this this resource doesn't have to report out to Title IX or to law enforcement um, of instances of interpersonal violence that students want to receive emotional support about. Um, Alex McDonald, I'm the Safe Place Advocate Administrator. Um, so we offer crisis intervention, so really just basic crisis counseling and emotional support. So um, educating people about what's normal, what's not normal, how to handle the situation, offering them legal or Title IX advocacy. So if they want to report, what does that look like? How do they do that? And then if they choose to do that, accompanying them through that process. Um, we also can fill out restraining orders or civil harassment orders as needed. And then um, academic accommodation, so if a student was assaulted or is in an abusive relationship and it's affecting their studies, sending requests to professors and kind of helping doing some academic advocacy so they can best continue to succeed in their classes. So Safe Place is not the resource for that. That would be CLIC or the Counseling Center here. But Safe Place is specific for victims and survivors of these issues. Um, and so that's something that we've talked a lot with the Title IX office and across campus of can we create some type of service specifically for people who have been falsely accused or even for people who have been reported and they know that that's something that they've done on mm -hmm. like some type of restorative mm -hmm. thing. So it's something we've thought about but have not had the resource to do, but the Counseling Center and CLIC are both um, adequate resources for that. I mean, there's a lot of reasons personally in terms of that that's, I work with students that struggle with that every day, but also the research shows us there are tons of reasons why people wouldn't report. And the number one thing is that they're afraid that they won't be believed, mm -hmm. um, that they won't be taken seriously, and that systems are really scary, especially when you're in crisis, right? So not knowing what the steps are to a reporting process, not knowing if it's going to be taken seriously. So they can utilize the service as well to explore that more in depth, but the biggest thing is just to believe them. Um, a lot of our culture kind of says that it, people falsely claim this for attention or because they, they, I mean, big attention or revenge, right? But that people don't just make this stuff up, um, mm -hmm. that it's very, very few cases, and research mm -hmm. tells us that as well. And so believing them, um, providing them support to the fullest of your ability in terms of um, saying, hey, do you want to go for a walk? Or checking in on them and then referring them to resources, right? So mm -hmm. sending them here. <laughs>